All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, thank you for joining us. My name is Dan. I work here on the marketing team with Hasselblad. I'm based out on the east coast of the U.S., so morning for me, but I appreciate you joining us if you're uh, coming in from elsewhere around the world. Um, this is the second webinar uh, on the topic of focus, so really glad to have you here. And um, before we get started, as is tradition, uh, we do want to just run through some housekeeping bits. So um, we do have uh, portions of the presentation that are both visual and audible today. So if you are joining us via mobile phone, which is possible, um, it's not the best experience. So if you can rejoin by a tablet or desktop in the link that you received by email. Uh, likewise, if you get disconnected, just refer back to the link and it'll bring you back into the session. If you've made it this far in, you can't hear us, do uh, check the audio output settings. Oftentimes if you have um, external speakers or an external audio device, it's not uh, selected by default, but um, just in case, do check that if you can't hear us yet. And likewise, don't worry, we can't hear you quite yet. So as an attendee, uh, your mute is on by default. So if you need to sneeze or cough, don't worry about it. But we do want to hear from you. In the uh, control panel on the right, or if you're joining by the mobile app, the question mark in the top right hand section is, a, is the opportunity to ask us a question. And we have um, some great staff attendees online. Uh, Mark and Emmy, thank you so much for helping out. Now, if your question doesn't get addressed immediately, we actually may be re, uh, responding to it later on in the presentation. And towards the end, we'll have the opportunity to also uh, go through a couple of your questions and discuss them as a group. So do definitely wanna hear from you. Do take advantage of the question and answer option um, in the control panel there. So to get us started, uh, let's take a quick look at what's in the store for today's session. We're gonna start with a look at focus platform by platform. Uh, with each version's capabilities. And included in each look is an overview of the basic hardware requirements, the compatible cameras, uh, each uh, version's basic feature set, and really the uh, practical applications of where you might use each version of Focus. Now, today is very much oriented towards a broad level overview. And we have some resources in the handout section and we'll include some links at the end uh, to where you can learn more about each version of Focus and really become uh, a true power user. Uh, before we dive into things here, I do want to throw out a poll um, just to see for the attendees here um, if they currently own a Hasselblad camera, if you've used one before. So we'll go and uh, put that up online and just give you all a few seconds to respond here. Amazing. Already seeing a great majority of users of both X and H system cameras. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Very cool, we'll give that just a few more seconds. Fantastic, well, glad to see that a little over a third of the folks attending today are um, Hasselblad X system users and definitely a great platform to be working on um, and a good majority of H and V system users. So really appreciate you supporting us and the enthusiasm there. Um, along the way, there'll be some different platform variations that suits each camera, so definitely stay tuned for more. So. Um, as we move forward, we want to look at typically how we divide hardware, and it goes into two primary categories. Uh, firstly, we have mobile, which can indicate either a tablet or a phone. And in this category, we have two versions of our mobile application. The first is Fo uh, Focus Mobile One, initially released in 2014, and as we'll discuss later, has been built for iPhone and iPad. And then Focus Mobile 2, a more recent development released last year that is optimized for iPad Pro, but we'll talk about other options when we get to that. On the desktop side, we have one sole application, uh, Focus 3.5, that's available for Mac and PC. So keeping on topic with desktop, uh, we're only on version 3.5, but actually um, one, one of my colleagues, Paul Clausen, reminded me that Focus goes back well over 11 years, um, with the first version 1.0 being announced in July 2008. So since its inception, Focus has really been designed to be the free of charge solution that helps photographers achieve the full capabilities of a Hasselblad digital camera. And even though the computer technologies and the cameras have changed since then, uh, Focus is still a core component to how we see the imaging experience uh, from the initial capture to editing, exporting, and sharing. So looking at the basic desktop requirements, as mentioned, Focus 3.5 uh, works on Mac and PC. For Mac users, uh, that's OS 10.13 or later, and, or 10.13, and for PC users, Windows 7 with Service Package 1 or later. 
Now, an important distinction to make is that these are both 64-bit based, meaning that if you're working with an older machine, you do need to use an older version of Focus for optimal operation. And the good news is that we do support the older versions of Focus online, meaning that they are still available to download for free from Hasselblad.com. Now, they don't take advantage of all of the latest features that we keep building on the iterations or the new iterations of Focus, um, but it is nice that if you're running an older system or you do have to run a legacy operating system, uh, the option is out there to run a back version of Focus. Now, in general, we recommend 10 gigs of free space on the boot drive and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, while you can run Focus on 8 gigs of RAM, it's kind of a suboptimal experience and you're not taking full advantage of the software. And likewise, Focus does support an eGPU or metal-based graphics card, meaning that if you've got a more advanced system build um, with an external graphics processing unit, we're able to take advantage of the hardware in order to more efficiently render out previews and export the processed files uh, a little bit faster in greater detail. So really nice to have the expansion and the capability in that overall. So as a program, we divide focus into four major areas. Uh, the first is capture, which is kind of either the import from a memory card or um, importing it from your hard drive or even tethered shooting directly into focus. And once we have our files imported, we can then use the browse option uh, to have a number of great organizational tools at hand or even presentation tools uh, at a single click. Followed by adjust, uh, this is where we're taking full advantage of the Hasselblad RAW file uh, for image editing and optimization. And finally, export as a last step where uh, we'll take a broad view look at each stage, but with exporting as the final delivery into a secondary file format or additional editing down the road. So starting at the capture stage, Focus is incredibly powerful in its tethered capabilities. Um, with, all, with all that it's capable of, uh, we can't dive into every single feature, but we'll highlight a couple. And actually, a few weeks ago, my colleague Chris Coos did host a great webinar on Focus 3.5, which is linked in the hands up, handout. So um, definitely take a look at that if you're looking at a very, very close view of Focus and how to use the software. But in terms of tethered capture, we support all Hasselblad digital cameras and digital backs with a FireWire or USB-based connector. Uh, so this goes from H1D all the way up to the current H6D and X1D cameras. And what's really fantastic upon that is with H3D to Ford, you can actually access live view off of the sensor. So if you're working with a camera out of reach or it's high up above the scene, um, you're able to use live view and the internal controls in the capture pane to remotely focus, control, and uh, fire the camera, which is really fantastic. And admittedly, one of my favorite tools in the capture tool set is the sequencer, which actually lets you build out a very, very customized uh, sequence of bracketing and interval designations. So you can put in the number of exposures, a delay between each shot, and exposure offsets for shutter and aperture. So it's bracketing on steroids. And um, having it on a desktop interface makes it really easy to manipulate. And if you're not shooting tethered, Focus is, of course, our primary recommendation uh, for the conversion from 3FR or in camera recording raw files uh, to FFF for further editing. So, um, it's really, in terms of image handling algorithm, really the best option when it comes to achieving as much as the camera can really deliver. And finally, if your workflow calls for it, we've actually built focus in a number of ways to support our users who are working in a customized color environment, meaning that um, for museum and art reproduction studios, for example, um, the ability to produce scene and profile calibrations that account for lighting, lens cast, and really work in a completely controlled and calibrated environment. It's really powerful inside Focus. Now, working on Mac specifically, uh, we're able to take advantage of Apple's core image framework, which is a system level capability in Mac OS. And basically it means that Focus is able to also interpret uh, third party raw files. So to date, there's over uh, 600 cameras that produce files that Focus can um, import, view, and actually edit to a basic level of exposure, color, uh, crop correction and export the file to a third party file format. So this is really handy if you're managing files from multiple cameras, um, but because it is a uh, utility based to the Mac OS platform, it is only available on the Mac platform. Now to change things up a little bit, we'll jump to the visual interface that you see when you open focus and we're looking at the default organization in the browse tab and along the top here, you'll see the most common tools used. So image capture, import, export, uh, modify, which is um, if you want to make batch adjustments to multiple images, delete, print, slideshow, and app preferences. 
Um, along the mid center is where you can customize the interface. I love focus for the fact that you can uh, go in and really tune how the app is laid out to exactly as you want. And then in the center, you'll find the adjustments presets. So a preset number of parameters that you can apply to a single image or multiple images. Um, but before we get to image adjustment, we do want to look at the organizational tools. So in the carousel on the bottom of thumbnails here, um, you'll find in the lower left-hand corner of the thumbnails, uh, two parameters. First is a red, yellow, green architecture. Uh, users who've been uh, with the Hospital Digital System for years will recommend uh, recognize it as the IAA or instant approval. Um, and this is basically like traffic lights. So by default, images come in as yellow. If you mark them as a select or you love them, you can highlight them as green. Um, if you want to mark them for deletion, you can highlight them as red. And this is an architecture that's been built into a number of cameras and you'll actually see it um, in portions throughout the rest of our software portfolio too. Alternatively, you can also use star ratings from one to five. And uh, just by using either clicking on the icons or uh, on the keyboard numbers one through five, you can hit the stars um, or six, seven, eight in color flags too. And this is really a great way of culling through images uh, right after a shoot and kind of finding the selects really quickly. Um, shortcuts, by the way, or keyboard shortcuts are in the PDF manual focus towards the back, and that is in the handout section. Um, I love it because it's actually pre-formatted for you to print out and tape to your monitor. Uh, so as you get more and more familiar with the software, uh, definitely a great resource to have uh, just a PDF user manual for the software. So moving on back into the browse and kind of filtering, given that you've already rated or starred the images, you can now uh, fil filter and sort them in mass, either by file name, uh, star rating, or color label in ascending or descending format. Um, on to the more advanced functions of the interface. Along the right-hand side, you'll see our basic capture info at the top, which is XF metadata, so lens, camera, and exposure information. And down below that, you have IPTC core um, and the keyword fields. So these are nearly universal file um, metadata formats that you can add headlines, descriptions, captions, even contact info, um, all really meant for better file organization. And IPTC as a standard is supported by other pieces of software. So um, adjustments that I make here will be uh, supported in Bridge or um, uh, uh, any other program that's able to open the raw file format and view the caption information. So mentioned previously for presentation is actually a tool that I don't use as much as I uh, wish I could, um, and it's our slideshow function. And simply, if I select a preset of images, like if I want to select only red or only yellow images and quickly present them, the slideshow tool is a really great uh, functionality in terms of just clicking one button and presenting the images either on a black screen as a contact sheet or as a slideshow single uh, one through one through one. Um, and it's a great way, for example, midway through the shoot to present to the client, okay, here are the selects that we've made along the way. So given the power of what the Hasselblad digital camera systems can achieve with a really lovely medium format sensor, it's natural that we've built focus as a complement for uh, pretty adjust, uh, pretty impressive adjustment capabilities. So we're looking at the default here and starting with global adjustments, um, which means that these are parameters that apply to the entire image as a whole. You have your basic uh, tool set. So exposure, contrast, shadow, fill, highlight, recovery. Um, anyone who's familiar with a program like Camera Raw or Lightroom, most common image editors will recognize a linear sliders or numerical value input. So we've built it to be very um, generally familiar to most folks. And, in terms of uh, computer editing. Now, interestingly, in the top right here, you'll see a V2 indication as a drop-down menu. And what this indicates is basically, um, over time, we've updated and improved the image handling algorithms available in Focus. And uh, version 3.5 brought forward version 3, um, which really allows for very nuanced uh, tonal editing without much contamination of colors. Um, but what's good is that if you've processed files using an older algorithm, and you need to match them, or you want to reprocess your files using the new algorithm, it's very easy. You can just toggle V1, V2, and now currently uh, V3 with this drop down here, uh, which gives you a lot of congruity over a, a large number of files. It's super convenient too. Down below that main exposure pane is another one of my favorite tools, the adjustment layers. And this lets you selectively apply <clears throat> a number of localized adjustments. So color, uh, exposure, uh, details like more or sharpness, it's really easy to add a layer and brush them in, either using a brush or a linear and radial gradient. And what's neat is that you can also stack these additively as well. So if you want to use 
an adjustment layer just for exposure and then an adjustment layer just for contrast. You're able to separate these out and toggle them independently. Now, as you can clearly see, there's a ton of editing capabilities in Focus, um, but I do need to keep things on schedule today. But again, um, we hosted a previous webinar on Focus 3.5, and it really goes into great detail of all of the power of the software, and we'll be hosting ones down the road as well. So if there's a feature that you're curious about or just a workflow-specific function that you want to learn more about, do drop the suggestion into the question and answer box. We're happy to hear from you um, to help build these webinars out to uh, suit you better. So what's really neat is that when we look at Focus as a solution, we've also built it for handling down the road or as a midway edit tool as well. So at the export stage, we do support most popular export file formats that, that does include TIFF, JPEG, PSD, and DNG. Now, this does permanently apply any adjustments that you've made in the software. Um, this is ideal if you're moving on to another program for uh, advanced compositing or retouching or print output, Photoshop, for example, um, but you are uh, making un unreversible changes. So for a truly lossless workflow, meaning that you can always step back the adjustments that you've made to the raw file, uh, we recommend keeping things in the FFF file format. And because Focus embeds the adjustments into the file, reopening it on another computer or in another folder, for example, means that you're able to reverse the adjustments as you go. Now, I do want to shout out to the traditionalists on hand um, where we still maintain a contact sheet uh, option. So very easily using the print pane, we have the ability to generate a contact sheet Surprisingly, I still find that visually looking at a single sheet or a single PDF with images on the grid is a great way of referencing an archive of images. So nice to have that function in there as well. So let's look at the key uses, for example, of where you would apply uh, focus for the desktop uh, program. So in general, we see it first as a, an incredibly advanced tethered catcher and raw handling tool. Um, it is really the recommended option in terms of achieving everything that your camera is capable of in terms of file definition and color quality. So with the tools that we've built into it, it's really idealized to uh, capture everything that your Hasselblad digital camera can really produce and take full advantage of the Hasselblad natural color solution and our optical design and really achieve everything that you can uh, capture in a single image. Now, the, we do recognize that it's also part of a workflow and that um, while you can do many things in Focus, there are uh, other pieces of software that come into play for advanced options like compositing, like retouching, or color managed print. Um, so we do output in common file formats like DNG or 16-bit TIFF and are happy to be part of an existing workflow among other components as well. So just to uh, get to know you a little bit better, we do want to throw a poll out here. Um, just to see if focus is currently part of your workflow or not. Um, and hopefully by the end of this webinar, we'll hear um, that anyone who answers no has changed that opinion. Oh, fantastic. Seeing a little bit uh, more than half of you are already using focus. So glad to have you along here today. All right, very good. Awesome, fantastic. So it looks like a little bit more than half of the attendees here are using Focus already. And um, thankfully we have more to learn. So hopefully with our uh, mobile apps, you'll have a few more options as well in terms of engaging Focus and seeing how it works. So let's move on to um, our first mobile app. So Focus Mobile One. Uh, first released in 2011 and is really a natural partner in terms of uh, working with the uh, focus or our Hasselblad digital cameras. So what's really neat is that it's very wide in terms of the supported camera or excuse me supported devices. Um, basically iOS 10 forward which means most um, iPhones after the 6s, most iPads and the like, you really have a wide uh, array of options in terms of the control devices here. Now there are two general functionalities that uh, Focus Mobile One really excels in. And we originally built it as a remote solution for the desktop, meaning that when you have your host computer or laptop and the mobile device, iPhone or iPad, uh, connected to the same Wi-Fi network, you can actually use Focus Mobile as a remote control for your desktop session. So for example, in this uh, visual, I have a camera already tethered to my computer and the Wi-Fi um, 
both my computer and the mobile device on the same Wi-Fi network. So uh, a wired connection between the camera and the computer and a wireless connection between the computer and my uh, iPad, for example, or iPhone in this visual. And what's neat is that as I make a change in the app from um, with shutter speed, for example, from 250th to 125th, um, I'm able to see that change uh, visualized as well on the screen in the computer. And likewise, if I change my aperture from the computer from 5.6 to 11, for example, that change is also indicated in the app. So I have a two-way street of communication. Um, if you have someone at the, at the camera controls as well, it's almost like a three-way street. Um, giving you a really intuitive remote control to the camera system overall. Now, what's really neat about this function is that you're able to do this with any camera that tethers to focus. So um, any Hasselblad digital camera, Firewire or USB, I have remote control over. Um, there are some caveats along the way, depending on uh, firmware and version history. But what that means is I could basically take uh, a, a digital camera that's 10 years old and still have remote controls via software and a mobile app. And that's really powerful for a, a complex studio build, for example. Another great feature when, in, uh, when working with Focus Mobile One is synchronized image viewing as well. So if I'm shooting tethered and have new images coming in, or I just have the client holding an iPad and I wanna navigate through a few images, what's really cool is that um, if I select a new image in the app, it also mirrors, or if I select it on desktop, it mirrors in the app. So as I navigate to the next image, either in a browse or tethered capture workflow, the app mirrors that navigation. Um, admittedly, it's a little bit more jittery in this presentation format because we're coming to you live over the internet and things get compressed. That being said, it's a lot smoother in use. Now, you don't always want to have the app following exactly what you're seeing on the computer, so you can browse files independently, which looks like this. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you'll see capture images or any images in the capture folder that I've targeted on desktop. Now, if I tap to view one that's larger, what's neat is that uh, my navigation here won't affect the desktop session, meaning that I can view it larger on the phone. I can even apply a rating. Now, what's cool is that that rating does sync up with the desktop version. So if I have my clients scrolling through images and they apply a five-star rating for something they really love, it syncs up to the desktop. Likewise, if I do that from the desktop, it is reflected in the app too. Um, lastly, one of the key features in Focus Mobile is the JPEG export. Um, so you can export a low resolution JPEG quite easily. Um, and what's really neat is that all of these features can be enabled or disabled. So in many cases, for instance, if I wanted to hand off the device or my tablet to uh, the client and I didn't want to give them camera controls or I didn't want to have them indep uh, independently browsing the images, you can uh, toggle these functions in the system preferences quite easily and really create a, a very flexible remote device. So what's interesting for us, though, is as the technology evolved, we would expand how the app works. Um, basically, from a certain point forward, we started building Wi-Fi into our cameras and started to bypass the need for a computer. And what's cool is that with the direct device, uh, direct to device connectivity, we can now use a mobile device like an iPhone or an iPad and connect directly to a Wi-Fi enabled camera. And you get many of the features like uh, camera controls for remote control of the camera, uh, capture following, browsing files that are on the SD or C, um, compact flash card, um, or a low-res JPEG export. So we're really starting to get into mobile uh, file handling as we know it. And so as mentioned, this started with the H5D 50C Wi-Fi version and then was upgraded into the H60 and first-generation X1D. Um, so all of these cameras basically have a a Wi-Fi generator or an ad hoc Wi-Fi built in and you connect your device to it um, and you're able to access many of the features that you would by um, having Focus Mobile on a, on a desktop session. So when we look at the key uses of things, uh, firstly, Focus Mobile One is an excellent remote controller for the camera. Um, not only does it function for the ability for live view and um, firing the camera, but you can also adjust exposure quite easily. And likewise, it's an excellent remote viewer as well. So when I'm shooting in the studio and I want a second monitor, but I don't want to run a power and a, a signal cable, I'm able to just pick up an iPad, connect to the same Wi-Fi network, and have a really portable solution when it comes to remote image viewing. And finally, it's also a great export utility in terms of a quick JPEG preview. Um, so if I'm traveling with an H6D and I just want to uh, export a really quick JPEG to share with some friends, um, Focus Mobile has the capability to do that in a very simple way and share the images pretty easily. Now, the two 
um, options that we've discussed are pretty interesting. Uh, firstly, we have a desktop program that's very powerful for tethered capture, raw conversion, image editing, and file export. And then we have a mobile program, which is a great wireless remote utility for camera control and image browsing, but has some limitations for editing and sharing. So this kind of crossroad brings us to a very natural point of where we are today with Focus Mobile 2. Um, introduced last year along the X1D 250C, uh, Focus Mobile 2 is our first app that really gives you a combination of powerful desktop plus uh, image tethering and editing with the portability of a mobile device. So because it's capable of some pretty powerful features, there are some higher spec requirements than Focus Mobile 1. Specifically, it's built for iPad OS 12 and forward, um, and you'll want an iPad with a minimum of three gigs of RAM. So that's a bit of a leak, so we'll look at specific models. Uh, iPad Air 2018 and the second generation iPad Pro forward are really uh, are models that meet our test requirements. That being said, we do hear from folks who run Focus Mobile 2 on lower spec iPads, but it really varies. Um, sometimes the experience is very stable, uh, sometimes it's um, not as stable. So that's why we do make the recommendation for the higher spec iPads. Specifically, the third and fourth gen iPad Pro, um, which is 2018 and the uh, 2020 version released quite recently, those are the better options because they're USB type C based. And that's important because we've built Focus Mobile 2 to be a tethered solution as well, meaning that you can connect wired or wirelessly to the X1D 250C and the 907X Special Edition. Uh, with these later generation iPad Pros, you simply need a USB 3 or 3.1 rated uh, type C to type C cable for this connection. Uh, if you're using a different iPad Pro, or excuse me, a different iPad with lightning connections, um, it is possible to dig a uh, USB 3 rated lightning to USB type C cable, but they're a little bit um, in greater demand and a little bit harder to find one that really works to spec quite well. Now, this connectivity is possible because we've built MFI certification into the cameras. Uh, this is a hardware level security requirement from Apple in order for us to transmit uh, files at great levels of uh, quality to an iOS device. Um, and because it's something that's built into the cameras, it's also why uh, the older generation Hasselblad digital cameras don't communicate with Focus Mobile 2. So jumping into the visual interface, I'll take you on an abbreviated tour of the program. Um, admittedly, next week we are holding a session at the same time, same day, so next Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard, um, where we'll run through the workflow step by step. But in this case, we'll do an abbreviated run through and look at a situation where my camera is already connected. And the first thing that I typically do is check the firmware. Um, so just by hitting the gear icon on the right, I can see uh, the firmware that's currently on the camera and lens. And I can also enable uh, firmware downloads and deployment to the camera. So as long as my iPad is connected to the, wide, uh, to the internet, I'm able to pull down firmware updates and apply them to the camera and lens. Now you can still download files independently from the um, my Hasselblad section of our website and install them via an SD card, just adding another functionality um, and really to me an easier way of keeping your camera up to date. Next, opening up the camera control pane, you'll see that the interface actually mirrors what you find on the X1D and H6D cameras. So you have access uh, with a very easy tap and scroll functionality to exposure, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, program compensation. Um, you can also toggle and start autofocus. Admittedly, um, and a feature request that we are very, very aware of is live view in the app. It's something that's available on version one of Focus Mobile, but not in this iteration. And it is something that we are working on in a future firmware and uh, app update. So it is, it is on the way. Next, one key differentiation we want to make in the software interface or the app interface is how the files are being handled. And you can see at the top uh, center of the app, I have two views, album and camera. An album refers to files that are being stored locally on the iPad, um, where if I tap camera, I can actually view files that are on the SD card in the connected camera. Um, while I can tap on a single image, enlarge it, and view basic metadata, um, I'm limited to what I can do when I'm looking at files on the SD card, and that's where you'll need to import them. So tapping the little download icon on the bottom right, um, in this case, I have a wired connection, so the import's quite quick. And that moves it from the SD card to the iPad, it, uh, iPad's internal storage or under album. Um, and then from this point, I can do a lot more. So with the file imported, 
Um, we'll start with organizational functions. So you can apply a color label in the very familiar red, yellow, green architecture. And we can also use stars to indicate if it's a select or not. Um, so if, for example, I were moving through a few images that were already imported, I could apply the ratings as I'd like them. And I can also filter them too. So using the filter view on the top right, I can uh, decide whether I want to sort ascending or descending, view JPEGs or RAWs, and uh, filter out stars or not, or red, yellow, green or not, and then a few uh, loop view options as well. Now, importantly, Focus Mobile 2 can edit um, only RAW files. You can view JPEG files as well, but the edit functionality is limited to a Hasselblad 3FR file uh, specifically. Um, which is important for the next pane on this one, where we have our basic uh, tool set. So it's very familiar to our uh, desktop users or really any image editing program where you have the typical tool set for exposure, contrast, shadow, highlights, um, even a curves tool for uh, RGB or individual color channels. Um, at the very bottom, you'll see the histogram as RGB creates so, um, individual color channels at their luminance values. And what's really cool is that you have a lot of the editing capabilities that you have on desktop and you're working with the original raw file, meaning that you're taking full advantage of what the Hasselblad digital camera system can produce. So you're using all the resolution and all the color information available to you. The next tool we'll look at is the color pane, and it's actually a really great level of color control, firstly as a global adjustment. So um, adjustments apply to the entire image for saturation, vibrancy, and white balance, you can even tune in a grayscale conversion um, using RGB filtering as you choose to opt to. Um, one of my favorite tools in this interface is actually the selective color editor. And what's really cool is that I can pick up a single color and use the accuracy of the touch interface to pick a single color in the scene. And in this case, I picked up the blue of the sky and I can tune the hue, saturation, and lightness to just kind of uh, accentuate things here. Um, What's really neat is that that bottom slider range is basically how selective or not it is. So if you need to uh, make a selective color adjustment to a wider range, it's quite easy and using that um, red highlight to pre-visualize what it's picking up. Uh, it's very, very intuitive to use. Now, admittedly, we are glossing over a ton of options. So we do wanna remind you about next week's webinar where we'll go through um, each tool at greater detail. Um, but to wrap things up for Focus Mobile 2 with the share options, uh, you have basically two options in JPEG and one with RAW. With JPEG full size, you're uh, exporting full resolution at 300 DPI. And with medium size, it's one quarter or 25% of the resolution at 72 DPI. And these are reflecting both with adjustments that you've made in app and the crop reflected. Uh, so if you crop into the file a fair bit, the resolution of course is uh, affected there. What's neat is that these are both in sRGB and you have two excellent options in terms of easy sharing on web or social. So if I just need to uh, send a small file size over to someone for previews, the, um, the medium size option is great. If I want to send someone something that they can post, but higher resolution, the full resolution or full size is excellent. The 3FR here uh, is done as the original unedited raw file, meaning that adjustments that I make in the app are not exported with the file. And this is really idealized if you're looking to uh, share the raw file into another program like Lightroom CC, for example, if you've got a different workflow. We are aware of the desire to export the adjustments with the raw file, and it is something that our software team is considering. Um, but a big caveat in terms of uh, if you're working with other programs, it gives you flexibility to work with the untouched raw file. So when we look at the key uses of Focus Mobile 2, uh, firstly, it's an excellent way of getting images out of the camera. Uh, for X1D2 and 907X special users, um, that means that you're able to tether and store files directly onto the iPad if you're shooting on location, for example, um, or you can import from the SD card uh, after the fact and either import everything or do a selection, which is something I do um, just as a portable data back uh, backup. Now, it's also an excellent editing solution. It really captures many of the features that we've uh, built for desktop and brings them to a much, much more portable form factor. Um, and having the touch interface makes the edit process so much more intuitive. And that's also about the shared experience as well. So when you have the ability to pull in really beautiful medium format quality images, um, we want to give you the ability to share those images instantly. And we released it with X1D2 specifically because that camera embodies kind of the elevation of portable uh, image quality, and we find that Focus Mobile 2 is an excellent complement to that 
and the idea of going further with your photography and now with a very powerful um, edit and share functionality. So when it comes to mobile editing, uh, I'll take the opportunity to throw out another poll. And I'm curious to see if your workflow currently includes mobile editing or not. And this can be with Focus Mobile 2 or another program like a Lightroom CC or Luminar. Um, and what's interesting is that it looks like a good majority of folks haven't tried it yet, but are curious. That's great. Very cool, we'll give it one more second. Awesome. Very interesting. So it looks like a little over half of you haven't tried it yet, but are curious. And what's great is that we continue offering Focus Mobile 2, Focus Mobile 1, and our desktop software for free. So um, for example, if you have an iPad Pro and you just want to try it out, you can download Focus Mobile and actually um, have the option to download sample files with it as well, and very quickly just jump into uh, using the software and getting to know it a little bit better. But let's um, get back to the presentation and wrap things up with a more all-encompassing summary of what we've gone over today. So firstly, our desktop program, which is built for Mac or PC, uh, works with all Hasselblad digital cameras with a USB, uh, USB or FireWire interface, and really embodies the most powerful features when it comes to tethered capture, remote control, image editing, and exporting. Um, of course, as mentioned, we offer it for free for all users, whether you own a Hasselblad camera or not. Next is our first generation mobile app that uh, has a very wide range of supported devices, iOS um, 10 and forward, so iPhone 6 and most generations of iPad. And you can connect it to a desktop session of focus over Wi-Fi or directly to an H5, Wi-Fi, H6, or first generation X1D camera. And it gives you really powerful features like remote camera control, image browsing, and a low resolution JPEG export also offered for free on the Apple App Store. And finally, Focus Mobile 2, where we are today. Um, it has been optimized for higher spec iPads, uh, works with the X1D2 and 907X special edition cameras, and really combines the feature sets of desktop class editing and a very portable form factor. Um, finally, the export functionality, the ability to share uh, processed raw or processed JPEG files or unprocessed raw files uh, for later editing is really quite powerful. And as mentioned, we offer that up for free as well. So as a reminder, uh, next week, I'll be taking you through each step of Focus Mobile 2 with an X1D2 50C at much greater detail. Um, whether you own the camera or not, definitely sign up just to see where we're headed with mobile editing. Um, and if you haven't signed up already, check out the uh, webinar handouts PDF in the handout section. Um, we kind of cover everything today, which is, um, well, I'd love to spend two hours with you, but we do have to go on. Um, so check out the Learning More PDF. It includes links to our event section, which is all of our upcoming events, and also links to download Focus either on desktop or mobile. Um, and on there, you'll also be able to find the uh, previous webinar that we hosted with Focus 3.5, uh, hosted by my wonderful colleague, Chris Coos, and really gets you up and running to become a Focus Power user. Uh, before we jump on to the questions from the audience, I do want to throw out one last poll um, and just to see what other programs you're using for editing. Um, so this can be um, an Adobe program or something from someone else. Just curious to see what you're using out there. Excellent. Interestingly and overwhelmingly, a number of users uh, sticking with Photoshop and Camera Raw and kind of a two-step workflow, um, followed by Lightroom Classic. Huge fan of Lightroom Classic, admittedly. Um, and CC. Very cool. Glad to know that about you. And it helps us kind of uh, design what we're working on next in these online uh, learning sessions. So for now, we'll actually hop over to the questions and kind of see um, what you've been asking about and glad to know what we have in store. Um, I have a question here from Vape. Uh, can focus be controlled by loop deck? Super interesting one there. Um, loop deck specifically uh, for, you know, for folks who don't know, it's um, kind of a, a USB uh, control surface. It's really nice because it has um, touch points for knobs, sliders, buttons, 
um, in terms of editing. Admittedly, right now, there isn't direct connectivity to a loop deck. It's a piece of hardware that's actually been built primarily towards Lightroom. Something that I use personally is actually um, a stream deck from a company called Elgato. Um, it's basically, you can get it in a six, 15, or I think 20 or 18 button arrays. And it's a USB device that you can basically write uh, keyboard macros to or shortcut. So for example, um, it's connected to my desk here, but I'll try to show you. Oh, it's too short. Um, basically what I've done with the Stream Deck is um, allow it to quickly call through images. So using the red, yellow, green uh, function and the next image and then mark for deletion. And it's actually a really quick way of navigating. And because it's pretty open-ended and I can tie it to a specific app, um, I'll use the Stream Deck just to very quickly call through images um, and then go into the next step with my mouse and keyboard with in terms of making um, critical adjustments to the file. But excellent question. Um, great, have a question from your uh, using the batch modify tool. Can I use uh, or can I make a single adjustment or only EV value, but not others like in Clarity? Yes, you can create a batch adjustment that has um, basically everything zeroed out and then only make a change to uh, one parameter in your case, uh, exposure or EV, and then apply it as a first go. But if you change the preset, it will kind of um, affect changes everywhere else. So you can apply uh, two presets in conjunction. I would recommend writing the recipe for one and then jumping into the customizations for each image next after that. Let's see, a few more questions. Um, Oh, have a great question from Tom Householder joining us from the West Coast. Good to see you, Tom. Um, is there, we do have integration for Braun control. Are there plans to add any more comprehensive control within focus? So uh, what Tom's describing is our ability to address and remotely control um, certain Braun color products, including Scoro Wi-Fi and Ciros. Uh, and in focus, you can see basically the groups of things and also make global adjustments to the scene. Um, what we wanted to do is really not complicate the interface and keep it very easy. So the Braun control interface and focus is really meant for making very quick lighting adjustments um, to address groups and address uh, studio groups. We recommend jumping to the independent app Braun control um, where you have much more finite control. And it's a little bit difficult to, if you have example, two packs and six heads, um, display all of that in one control pane. So there's no issue running the two programs simultaneously. Um, oftentimes folks will run focus on the computer and run control on an iPad, for example. So um, just separating the two, but at the moment we're sticking with kind of the very basic or just the basics uh, tool set with the broad control pane in, um, uh, in focus. Let's see here. Um, is live view on a portable device uh, possible from our good friend uh, Godfrey? Yes, it is something that we are working on to add. Um, so basically opening up uh, Focus Mobile 2 and accessing Live View from the camera uh, for composition and focusing, it is something that we are very, very much working on uh, to bring forward to uh, to make possible. Man, ton of great questions. And um, I am sorry, we won't be able to address everything uh, here today, but we are working on it. So we are, um, if there's a specific question, we'll definitely follow up with you after the fact and hopefully some of the questions that we're getting about Focus Mobile 2, we will um, ad or address in our webinar next week too. Let's see. Um, great question. If I'm shooting with Focus Mobile 2 for sharing on social, um, does it make sense to shoot JPEG or RAW or just shoot RAW? Um, this is a really interesting differentiation. So X1D2, uh, it's neat because you're able to shoot JPEG in camera, um, but the recommendation we'd make is always capture in the highest quality format, uh, no matter what the delivery is going to be. So uh, in this case, just continue to shoot raw and, and import them into Focus Mobile 2, and you have a very easy functionality in terms of uh, exporting very easily. So um, the good news is that you're able to edit things even further if you want to, whereas if you shoot JPEG in camera, uh, your options are you know much more limited when it comes to editing and latitude there. So I uh, do want to be careful with that. I um, have a question from Steven. When using Focus Mobile 2, is there an advantage between an iPad fifth generation or an iPad Pro? Uh, yeah, primarily it's gonna be the connectivity. Again, USB type C that you find on the X1D2 uh, and the 907X Special Edition versus um, uh, a lightning connection that you have on the older generation iPads or fifth gen iPad. Um, 
you can find a Type-C to Lightning cable that runs at USB 3.1, but they're much harder to find than a Type-C to Type-C cable uh, that runs USB 3.1. So one's much more common, one's a little bit harder to find. Um, and it's a little bit tricky. Not every manufacturer properly rates and labels the cables. Um, so having the direct Type-C to Type-C connection is much more powerful. Um, I'm not too familiar on the iPad 5th gen as it is, but if it meets the RAM requirements and it's running, running smoothly, there's no loss of image quality there, um, but it really just comes down to connectivity and how you're using the camera. Let's see, I have a question from Dominique about focus stacking uh, capabilities and the software. Um, we've integrated focus stacking or more specifically focus bracketing uh, into the first generation X1D camera. It is something that we are working on for um, the X1D2 and other future cameras, but we always wanna make sure that we're able to do it in a high quality way. Um, and admittedly, um, focus stacking or the image merge is quite a powerful process. And um, at the moment, we believe that it's more effective to do this in a separate program. So uh, whether it's Photoshop or Helicon um, or a number of image stack and merge programs out there, uh, we give you as many tools as you can to capture that sequence and hopefully uh, provide you with the option to merge them after the fact. But it's not something that we're necessarily working on in software at the moment. But all things can change. For sure. Um, very cool. Just want to pick one or two more questions. If you've got a question to drop in, definitely pop it into the question pane before we sign off here. Let's see. Uh, gradient tool and Focus Mobile. Um, so hopefully Focus Mobile 2, which does have the edit functionality, it is something that we're working on kind of more fine, uh, fine-tuned um, local adjustments at the moment. Um, most of the things are happening as global adjustments, but you can do uh, a small amount with the selective color tool, but definitely uh, feature well received and very, very eager to address it down the road. Very cool. Um, a lot of questions about the X1D2 um, and the 907X. The 907X, very popular camera, special edition. Um, it is shipping in smaller quantities at the moment with some challenges at hand, um, but because of the limited edition run, uh, most of our dealers have stopped taking new orders for it. Uh, regarding the regular edition, we don't have the final pricing or availability quite yet, um, but do stay tuned to typically how you hear from us. So at Hasselblad and Social, our email newsletter, um, we'll have more news later in the year on, uh, on the 907X regular edition. Very cool. So there are a ton of great questions again. Unfortunately, we can't address everything and our time is nearly up. Um, so if you have any further questions, do um, feel free to contact us directly. You can respond to the uh, webinar registration email. Um, and that, that way our staff will be able to reach out to you likewise um, on social at Hasselblad um, or through any of your authorized representatives. Feel free to give them a shout this time. I'm sure they would love to talk to you. Uh, do want to remind you of next week's webinar. Uh, this time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard on Tuesday, we'll be going through a much more in-depth look at Focus Mobile 2 specifically and its connectivity to uh, uh, the X2 and I7X Special Edition and a very detailed kind of workflow example. So hopefully you can join us for that one. If not, do register. We do record these webinars. So if you want to view this webinar next week's or previous webinar down the road, uh, we do record them and those will be in a link in an email uh, that will follow up with you on uh, in a few hours. But for now, really want to thank you for joining us. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks.